What up, world? Uh oh, what I do? What did I do? What's up, world? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Well, look, y'all already know what we're gonna do. Hey, your boys are a little bit late. Got some stuff we gotta take care of. You already know what we're about to do. We're about to do NCLEX questions. We about to do NCLEX questions. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, if you guys are just now joining, welcome. We are doing NCLEX questions. I'm about 10 minutes late because, you know, you know, adulting is hard sometimes. I'm just letting y'all know. Uh, uh, make sure you guys like, share, smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Don't be greedy your whole life. Uh, if you guys are new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at, your nursing journey. Once we get a good amount of folks up in here, then I'll turn this camera around. We're going to make it happen. So I want to start when there's a good amount of people because I get yelled at all the time. Why don't we have? Why didn't you wait for me? I'm just like, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. So shout out to y'all that are just jumping. We're doing NCLEX questions, waiting for folks to come in. Make sure you guys smash the like button. Make sure you guys share so people know that I'm live right now. And then, yeah, we're going to get it on and popping. But I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. What's up, Jigglypuff? Like I said, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Let me know. Are you a pre-nursing student? Are you in school right now? Are you graduating soon? Um, you know, all that. All that good jazz. All that good jazz. What are we doing? Hey, hey, I'm from Kentucky. I'm taking my PN in four weeks. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. You're going to go crush that exam. I actually had somebody message me today, and uh, they actually asked me about coaching. And I was like, do you think I need coaching? I'm taking my exam on Thursday. I was like, no, you don't. And I was like, if you've been preparing the way that you're supposed to, you really shouldn't have a problem. Are you going to be nervous? Yes, but it's nothing that no one else feels when they go to take that exam. All right. So she's going to do great. Give her some words of positivity. Hopefully she'll jump up in the uh, she'll jump up in the chat and be like, hey, Kevin, it's me. So uh, Illinois, May of 23. Also, oh, you just graduated. You need to take your NCLEX. OK, then <laughs> you need to sign up for it. There you go. Good afternoon from Montego Bay. Shout out to Jamaica. Shout out to Jamaica. Hey, y'all ever had these little rice cakes? These are cinnamon ones, and they're delicious. So, you know, hey, so make sure you guys like, share, follow. I'm going to give it about another five minutes, y'all. The more people we get in here, the better. Do you think uh, I can work from home as an RN? Absolutely. You have tons, and I mean tons of RN work from home positions. You just got to know where to look for them. Insurance companies, medical devices companies, um, everywhere. All, all, all different types. Education, jobs, you name it, they have them. All right? But um, yeah, we're gonna go over we're gonna go over a good bit of questions today. So, hey, the more you guys like, the more you guys share, the more you guys follow, the more that we can get uh we can get it on and popping. So I got 13 people in here. Usually by this time I have a hundred. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. But um, today might just be that you know that whack Wednesday where I don't get a lot of people. And well, that's okay. I work from home with Humana at the transition. Shout out to you, Cindy. Cindy Lou Who. I see you out there. Um, Sophia program allows for us to do uh, mini nursing courses online. So there's a lot of courses that are out here. You just got to find them. You really just got to find them. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. I'm going to turn this thing around. But apparently, it will be taking forever. Hello, you didn't know. Oh, I didn't know if you were going to come in. How's the leg? Oh, so I just came from a doctor's appointment, and the leg is good. Uh, physical therapy's coming up. You know. You know how it goes. Physical therapy, so I'll be starting that. We'll be doing that for like the next six to eight weeks. And then we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what's up after that. But all right, we got a good, we got some people, we got some folks over here. I ain't gonna keep y'all waiting because everybody else wants to be late. So there we go. Let me know if everybody can see that. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you guys are new here, welcome. We are about to do NCLEX questions. Make sure you guys participate. Give me all them likes. Don't troll my chat. If you give me a if you troll my chat, I'm gonna ban you. That's what a 600 means. Okay. And trust me when I trust me when I tell you. Ask anybody else in here. You test me, I'm gonna ban that ass. You know, with, with all with all due respect, of course. So, don't troll my chat. Also, um, I got these questions off nurselabs.com. I don't gatekeep. So, seven day NCLEX course, real quick, y'all. The new generation NCLEX review is done. It's being edited and all that good jazz. Um, and it's it'll be up in the course here within the next couple of days. So. If you got it, you're going to you're going to get that review. And that's it's about total time. It's about almost four hours. Right. So it's going to be broken up into smaller videos. So who wants to sit there for a whole three hours to watch that? Right. So make sure you guys check that out. And it's pre launch 48 bucks. And if you want coaching, uh, you can check that out in the link in my bio. All those links are in my bio. All right. So here we 
go. Also, I'm gonna put y'all on a timer because I don't need y'all taking forever. All right, here we go. Question number one. Uh, the client with varicella will most likely have an order for which category of medication? Antibiotic, antipyretics, antivirals, or anticoagulants? Should I start studying for NCLEX while prereqs? No, you don't. I wouldn't recommend studying for uh, NCLEX and prereqs because you don't even know what you're going to be studying. I would, re I would recommend slowly incorporating NCLEX after your first semester because at least you'll have the fundamentals down of understanding like, oh, okay, now I, I can kind of understand it. Like you'll be able to, you know, understand the language, so to speak, you know? All right, we got C's. Slay Queen, your mom, first of all, disrespectful, but I appreciate the follow. All right, y'all, oh, I didn't even start my timer. I didn't even start my timer. I thought today was, what did I say today was Wednesday? Te today is definitely Monday. See, I don't even know what's going on. I appreciate everybody jumping in. Hey, we're doing NCLEX questions. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. All right. And make sure you guys let me know all that, I'll know all that info down in the chat. I'm gonna give you all about another 10 seconds, but everybody's already kind of crushing this question. So I might just jump to it. Yeah, I'm just going to jump to it. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two, and nope, I messed it up already. Here we go. All right. Yeah. So the answer is antivirals. Varicella is chickenpox. This herpes virus is treated with uh, antiviral medications and adults infection uh, tends to be more severe. Um, and treatment of antiviral drugs is advised if they can be started within 24 to 48 hours of rash onset. In children, acyclovir decreases symptoms by day one if taken within 24 hours of the start of the rash. All right. So hey, I know some people are going to be like, oh my God, these are easy questions. Well, they're free. They're free questions. So I mean, I got them off nurselabs.com. If you, if, you, if you feel like they're too easy, go yell at them. But hey, you never know where somebody's going to be at in their nursing journey. So some people don't know these answers. All right. So don't be trying to come for me in the chat because they're too easy. All right. Hey, physiological adaptation. That is the third largest section on the NCLEX. OK, here we go. Question number two. Uh, the client is admitted uh, complaining of chest pain. Which of the following drug orders should the nurse question? Is it nitroglycerin, uh, uh, ampicillin, propanolol or verapamil? What are we thinking? User says, preach. Look, I don't like when people come in here and tell me, hey, these are too easy. I didn't ask you if they were too easy, did I? I'm just saying. I didn't ask you that. I just, I'm going off the questions because I get a lot of people that are in here that are not nurses. He's like, B, baby. Okay. Is that Ellen DeGeneres as your screen? <laughs> not Ellen coming up in here tell, screaming answers at me. Hey, if you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. Make sure you guys like, share, and follow. That is what the algorithm wants, and that's what I need. All right. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is B. It's ampicillin. Uh, there is no indication for an antibiotic such as ampicillin. Ampicillin. Penicillin uh, has been very effective against uh, Staph aureus in the past. However, Staph aureus has become uh, compatible of uh, exhibiting resistance against them by uh, producing a penicillin enzyme. <laughs> All that other jazz. Oh, by the way, if you don't like the way that I sound and when I spell stuff, I didn't ask you either. So <laughs> once you become a nurse, you're not going to say all these words. Let me just keep it all the way real. All right. Uh, we would we would want nitro. Yeah. For somebody who has possible chest pain. Yep. And so here you go. Look. So here you go. Safety and infection control. Kenna, don't be don't be laughing at me. All right. It's already been it's already been a rough day. All right. <laughs> but shout out to y'all. Here we go. Question number three. Which of the following instructions should be included in the teaching for a client with rheumatoid arthritis. Is it avoid exercise because it fatigues the joints? Uh, take prescribed anti-inflammatory medications with meals. Uh, alternate hot and cold packs to uh, to affected joints. Or D, avoid weight-bearing activity. Read that question wrong. Hey, so Jigglypuff, you always hear me say RTFQ. RTFQ means to read the effing question. <laughs> Technically, effing starts with an E, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Shout out to all y'all. Hey, if you guys are new here, make sure you guys like, share, follow, smash that like button, share because you're not greedy and then follow because, you know, I'm kind of cool sometimes. I do these. I do these questions every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 530 ish. Today, I'm a little late. So my bad. RTFQ. Yep. RTFQ. Read the fucking question respectfully. <laughs> all right. We got a bunch of C's out here. We got a bunch of C's. All right, y'all. Looks like we got our answer. Everybody's screaming out C. 
Looks like they're screaming out C. Some people are screaming out B. Okay. Well, let us find out the answer. Daphne says uh, D. Ellen says, I think B. All right, Ellen, I got you. Here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer. In three, two, and the answer is B. Take uh, prescribed anti-inflammatory medications with meals. Um, anti-inflammatory drugs should be taken with meals to avoid a, a stomach upset. Uh, Disease-modifying anti-rheumatic uh, drugs are indicated as soon as possible or I'm sorry, as soon as the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis is made. Traditional or conventional, uh, was it DMARDs, include uh, methotrexate, uh, was it left leftoflunide, uh, uh, sulfasalazine, uh, hydroxy, hydroxycholoquine, and all those other blessed of the drugs. Those. There's a lot. Yes, it's crazy. Could you reread the question? I thought it started what to not do. Hey, so just like NCLEX, Cindy Lou Who, we ain't going back. We ain't going back. Sorry, respectfully, of course. Here we go. Question number four. All right. A client with acute pancreatitis is experiencing severe abdominal pain. Which of the following orders should be questioned by the nurse? Uh, what is it? Uh, Meperidine, 100 milligrams, uh, IM, Q4 hours, PRN for pain. Mylanta, 30 cc's, Q4 uh, hours via, wow, uh, hours via NG. Uh, what is it? Uh, Cimetidine, 300 milligrams, POQID, or morphine, 8 milligrams, IM, Q4 hours, PRN for pain. What are we thinking, y'all? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 71 of y'all in here rocking with me. Hey, if you guys know anybody that needs these questions or even just a little community to be in, hey, this is what we're about. And also, these are recorded, so they will go up on my YouTube channel. YouTube channel is at The Boot Nurse. Everything is at The Boot Nurse. Instagram, Tic Tac, uh, X, uh, Thread. I don't really use Thread like that, but you know. All right, 15 seconds, y'all. Got B. You got B's. Hey, thanks for joining. If you guys are new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. We are doing nursing NCLEX questions. I got these questions off nurselabs.com. So check those out for yourself. All right, y'all. Everybody's saying B. Everybody's saying B. All right, well, let's find out what the answer is. Let us find out what the answer is in three, two, and the answer is D, morphine. Morphine is contraindicated in clients with gallbladder disease and pancreatitis because morphine causes spasms of the sphincter of ODI or OD, whatever you want to call it. GI obstruction is another important contraindication. Uh, it is also uh, considered to be many, uh, many, it is also considered by many as a contraindication to provide opiates uh, to individuals that have a history of substance misuse especially in a patient who had a history of uh, abusing opioids. All right. Uh Oh, SpaghettiOs. <laughs> hey, do you guys do LVN NCLEX too? So these are, so here's the thing. LVN NCLEX questions and the content are relatively the same. The biggest thing is that you need to know the difference of what you can and cannot do. You need to know what the roles and responsibilities are of an LVN. And you need to know what the roles and responsibilities are of an RN. So you know what you can and cannot accept. Okay. So don't get it. Don't get it confused. Trust me. I sit here and I coach people all the time. And, they're, and they, when I look at their questions, they're the exact same questions that an RN would get. OK, here we go. Question five. The client is admitted to a chemical dependence unit with an order for continuous observation. The nurse is aware that the doctor has ordered continuous observation because hallucinogenic drugs create both stimulant and depressant uh, effects. Uh, drugs induce a state of altered perception. Drugs produce. Uh, severe respiratory depression or drugs uh, induce rapid physical dependence. What are we thinking? I love this stuff. Is this new generation as well? So the, these questions that come from nurselabs.com, they don't include the new generation question types, a.k.a. they don't have the case studies. They don't have uh, like the bow tie. They don't have the clothes or anything like that. However, all it is, is just how it's re-delivered to you. So you, the biggest thing is that you have to know the content in order for you to apply it. All right. Kenneth says C. Kimberly says C. Cornbread Jiffy says B. Not Cornbread Jiffy. <laughs> All right, y'all. 15 seconds. What are we thinking? Monica. No, Monica. 
says B. Lucas says C. Rather says B. Sean says D. All right, cool. All right, y'all, let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is B. Uh, hallucinogenic drugs induce a state of altered perception. Uh, those drugs can cause hallucinations. Continuous observation is ordered to prevent the client from harming himself during withdrawal. Adverse effects are extremely subjective with significant variability and unpredictability. One patient may experience a positive effect filled with bright hallucination, hallucination sights and sensation, increased awareness owing to... Uh, owing to mind expansion and mark euphoria, the positive spectrum of effect is coequally called a good trip. Man, they want to use some good words up in here. I'm just saying. But uh, a part of uh, psychosocial integrity. OK, that is one of the smaller sections on the NCLEX, but still an important portion, important portion of the NCLEX as well. OK, Any, anywhere, I think between nine to 12 percent for uh, psychosocial integrity. I was thinking for withdrawals, but that wasn't an option. Yeah, see, don't try to put in more information that's not there because then you're going to get the question wrong, right? Hey, quick commercial break. Make sure you guys participate. We're doing NCLEX questions. Give me all them likes. Give them all to me. Um, don't troll my chat. You troll my chat. I'm going to ban you. I got these questions once again from nurselabs.com. I will say that the entire time. Uh, check out the seven day NCLEX course. If you're graduating within the next three to six months to a year, it's a perfect course for you, especially for $48 because you get it as we build it. And if you need one on one coaching, you can check out that link. It's also in my bio. All right, here we go. Question number six, a patient arrives at the emergency department complaining of mid sternal chest pain, which of the following nursing actions should take priority. Uh, a complete history with uh, emphasis on preceding events, an echocardio, I'm sorry, <laughs> an electrocardiogram, careful assessment of vitals or chest exam with auscultation. Somebody says, so glad I hardly had any psych stuff on mine. A lot of safety stuff and infection control on mine. Yep. The NCLEX in, in the grand scheme of things, it's all about safety, 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 right? It needs to know that you need to know how to perform as a standard basic I just got out of school, safe nurse. All right, everybody scream and B. I'll give you all 15 seconds. If you guys are new here, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. Got these questions off nurselabs.com. Make sure you guys like, share, follow, smash that like button, share because you're not greedy and follow because you, I guess you like me or whatever, you know, Rose uh, was a Rosemary. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Monica says a bye Felicia. Oh, oh shit. I did it again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I ain't mean it. Felicia said B. Kimberly, thank you for the follow. All right, y'all. <laughs> All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer. I'm just waiting for Felicia to say something. I know she's going to say something. Here we go in three, two. And the answer is a careful assessment of vital signs. Uh, the priority nursing action for a client arriving uh, at the ED in distress is to, assess, uh, is to always assess the vital signs. Right. This indicates the extent of the physical uh, compromise and provides a baseline by which to plan careful assessment and treatment. Monitor vital signs every five minutes during the initial during the initial uh, uh, anginal attack. Um, blood pressure may initially rise because this uh, the symptomatic stimulation uh, then falls if cardiac output is compromised. Tachycardia will also develop uh, in response to the sympathetic stimulation and may be uh, sustained as a compensatory response if cardiac output falls, all right? Hey, so it's super important, y'all. It says the comments were scary for me for a minute, thought I was wrong. Hey, hey, here's the thing. Even if you are wrong, that's okay because the whole point is for you to read your rationale so you understand why the answer is correct. And then you read these, the answers, or the answer choices to figure out why your choice that you picked was incorrect. This is NCLEX. I should have known uh, assessment is always first. Uh, assessment is not always first. It all it honestly just depends on how the question is asked and what is needed. Sometimes you got to implement. Like I'll give you an example. You have a patient who has a blown off extremity and they're hemorrhaging. Are you going to go to are you going to assess them or are you going to implement? Are you going to assess or are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? So it depends. It really does depend on the scenario. Here we go. Question number seven. The nurse has been hospitalized with pneumonia. I'm sorry. The patient has been hospitalized in pneumonia. It says do in real life. Even on NCLEX, they'll give you questions like that. Like if you have somebody who's massively hemorrhaging versus, hey, I need for you to assess them. I'm not going to be like, yeah, I think he's bleeding when I visually can see that this person is bleeding. 
and I mean hemorrhaging. There's a big difference between bleeding and hemorrhaging, okay? Um, the uh, What is it? The patient has been hospitalized with pneumonia and is about to be discharged. The nurse provides discharge instructions to a patient and his family, which misunderstanding by the family indicates the need for more detailed information. So this question is asking us, what did the patient's family not understand? Okay, so if you need to reword it for yourself, that's okay too. Just don't reword it to the point where you change the question because you're going to get the answer. You're going to choose the wrong answer. All right, 15 seconds. If you guys are just joining us, we're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurselabs.com. Make sure you guys like, share, follow. What's up, GG? I see you in there. That name Names look familiar, so if I give you guys a shout out, that's why. Melissa, you don't got to scream at me, okay? God. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer, y'all. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is C, the patient may discontinue the prescribed course of oral antibiotics since the symptoms have completely resolved. It is always critical that the patient being discharged from the hospital takes prescribed medica medications as instructed. In the case of antibiotics, a full course must be completed even after symptoms have resolved to prevent incomplete uh, eradication of the organism and reoccurrence of infection. Take antibiotics exactly as directed. Do not stop taking the medication just because you feel better. The client needs to take the full course of antibiotics, right? Because the last thing you want is to get what? Antibiotic resist uh, or re uh, resistant of antibiotics. Because then you got to give them, then you got to give them something else, right? Then you got to give them something else that's going to be stronger. And then, you know, you, then you're going to end up having all dif different types of other issues, right? So uh, health, promotions, and maintenance, all right? Appreciate the heart. Who gave me that heart? VM, I appreciate you. Thank you for the heart. All right, here we go. Question number eight. The nurse is caring for an elderly Vietnamese patient in the terminal stages of lung cancer. Many family members are in the room around the clock using unusual rituals and bring ethnic foods. Which of the following actions should the nurse take? Is it restrict restrict visiting hours and ask family to limit visitors uh, to two at a time? Notify visitors uh, with a sign on the door that the patient is limited to clear fluids only uh, with no solid uh, food allowed. If possible, keep the other bed in the room unassigned to provide privacy and comfort to the family or contact the physician to report the unusual rituals and activities. I probably wouldn't have said unusual because, you know, I would have worded this question a bit differently, but everybody's screaming a C at me. All right. All right. We got C's. We got C's. If you're just joining, we are doing NCLEX questions. I'm torn between B or C. Well, give me an answer. Give me one. Always respect patient spiritual needs. Shout out to you, user 14. You know what the deal is. Felicia, where your answer at? Now nah, I'm just picking on you now. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. y'all. Here we go. Here is our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer, of course, is C. If possible, keep the other bed in the room unassigned to provide privacy and comfort to the family. When a family member is dying, it is most helpful for nursing staff to provide a culturally sensitive environment to the degree possible within the hospital routine. In the Vietnamese culture, it is impossible. I'm sorry. It is important that the dying be surrounded by loved ones and not left alone. Traditional rituals and foods are thought to ease the transition to the next life when possible. Allowing the family privacy for this traditional behavior is best for them and the patient. So, so another thing I want you guys to realize is usually when somebody is dying in a room, it's usually a one to usually a one to one for the patient. Okay. Also management of care. That's, a, that's the largest section on NCLEX. If you're taking the LP in exam, um, it is coordinated care, but it literally is the same exact thing. All right. And then also, like I said, it was, it's with one-to-one, -one, but then during COVID, a lot of things made that, made that change and made that very different. All right. But as always, you always want to go off of the hospital's policy, right? But on the grand scheme of things, you want to be, uh, you want to be accommodating to the, to the spiritual needs and rich and religious needs of patients. Okay. Here we go. Question number nine, the charge nurse in the cardiac unit is planning assignments for the day. Which of the following is the most important assignment for the float nurse that has been reassigned from the labor and delivery? So the key word there is most, right? And now you're getting a float nurse who's coming to the cardiac unit who works in the who works in labor and delivery, right? So what do you think, what assignment would I give this patient? Okay, is it a one-week post-op coronary bypass patient who is being uh, evaluated for pacemaker 
or being evaluated of the placement of a pacemaker prior to discharge, is a suspected MI patient on telemetry just admitted from the ED and scheduled for an angiogram, is it a patient unstable angina uh, being closely monitored for pain and medication titration, or is it a post-op valve replacement patient who was recently admitted to the unit, uh, but all surgical beds were filled? We got A, Felicia, don't you, uh, come on now. Come on, Felicia, you got it. Either you got it or bye, Felicia. Ah, all right, I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. A, because most stable. Hmm, okay. Hmm, okay. Shout out to all y'all. Shout out to all 76 of y'all. Hey, in case, hey, case nobody knows, uh, I've been a nurse for three and a half years. Uh, I worked in the ICU for a little over a year. Then I worked in some PACU, and then the rest of the time has been in the operating room. Float is the keyword. Float, it, that's one keyword. And then the other keyword, which is in bold, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's most, right? It is most. D. All right, y'all. All right, I see. Well, okay, we got some Ds. We got some As. We got some Bs up in here. Okay. And we got some uhs in here from Felicia. So, all right, let's see. Uh, can you start an OR as a new grad? Yes. Here we go. Here we go. Here is our answer. Kenna, you can't be changing answers on me like that. Come on now. All right, here we go. Hey, unless, hey, when you're changing your answers, you better be able to 100% tell me, all right, on why you change it and be be that effective. All right, here we go. And the answer is A, right? A one-week post-op coronary bypass patient who is being evaluated uh, for placement of a pacemaker prior to discharge. So what's the key word in that sentence? One week, right? So this patient is not unstable, right? They are the most stable, right? So if I take somebody who's from labor and delivery and I put them in a cardiac unit somewhere where they're not comfortable or somewhere where they don't have that experience, you give them the most, you give them the most stable patient. Just like I would give an LPN the most stable patient, right? Yes. Lee Security. Yes, sir. All right, here we go. The charge nurse planning assignments must consider the skills of the staff and the needs of the patient. The labor and delivery nurse who is not experienced with the needs of cardiac patients should be assigned to those with the least acute needs. The patient who is one week post-op and nearing discharge is likely to require routine care. So shout out to all y'all that got that answer right. You know what I'm saying? Management of care. That is the largest section on the NCLEX exam. Out of the eight sections of the client needs, that is the largest section. All right. Here we go. Question number 10. Shout out to y'all. Make sure you guys like, share, and follow. All right. Here we go. Question 10. A newly diagnosed eight-year-old with type 1 diabetes and his mother are receiving diabetes education prior to discharge. All right, so paint the picture for yourself. The physician has prescribed glucagon for emergency use. The mother asks the purpose of this medication, which of the following statements by the nurse is correct. So what information did we give to the mom that was correct? Like, what do we say that was right? Glucagon enhances the effect of insulin in case the blood sugar uh, requires, high, uh, was it high, high one hour Okay, I don't like that. Anyways, y'all can read that one. Uh, glucagon treats hypoglycemia results from insulin overdose. Uh, glucagon treats, is it a, a lipoatrophy from uh, insulin injections? Or glucagon prolongs the effect of insulin, allowing fewer injections? Everybody's screaming B at me. All right. Oh, somebody said, somebody said something naughty and got blocked. Ellen says B. I don't know what your name is, so I'm just going to call you Ellen because that's all I see is your picture. Shout out to all 124 of y'all. If you guys are just joining, we are doing NCLEX questions. I got them off nurselabs.com. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Don't be greedy. Make sure you share because you're still not greedy. And then make sure you follow. Mostly because you're greedy. So make sure you follow me. All right. <laughs> and sorry if you guys hear my co-host over there. All right. Because he'll probably start screaming through the door. It's funny because you are the first person to recognize it's Ellen. It's probably the LASIK that I got. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> all right, y'all. Here we go. Everybody's screaming B at me. So let's see if answer B is the correct choice in three, two. And the answer is B. Glucagon is given to treat insulin overdose in an unresponsive uh, patient. Patients with decreased level of consciousness uh, cannot safely consume the oral carbohydrates needed to rise or to raise their blood sugar without risk of aspiration and obtaining IV access can be problematic in the diabetic population, which can prevent prompt administration of IV, of IV glucose. All right. That's a health promotions and management type of question. I believe I'm going right off the top of my head here. It's nine to 12 percent on the NCLEX. So it's a shorter section, but still a very important section. All right. So shout out to y'all. 
Here we go, real quick, commercial break. Hey, make sure you guys participate. Smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. I need That's the trifecta that TikTok needs, all right? And I need it, so make it happen, all right? So give me all them likes. Uh, don't troll my chat. You troll my chat. I'm going to ban that ass. That's literally what it says. I'm going to ban that ass, all right? Don't be rude. <laughs> uh, nurselabs.com is where I got these questions. Make sure you guys go to the link in my bio. You can find the seven-day NCLEX course for 48 bucks. It's yours. You get it forever. And if you want help with NCLEX, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for NCLEX and you can check that out in my link as well. All right, here we go. Question number 11. An infant with congestive heart failure is receiving diuretic therapy at home. Which of the following symptoms would indicate that the dose may need to be increased? Is it sudden weight gain, decreased blood pressure, uh, sw uh, slow, sw uh, sw uh, oh my gosh, slow, shallow breathing, or bradycardia? All right, we got some A's, we got some C's. We got some A's. OK. OK. So for those that don't know, paint the picture for yourself. So if I put somebody, what, is, what does a diuretic do? Right. What is the purpose of a diuretic? Answer the. You don't have to answer these in the chat, but answer these questions to yourself. What is the purpose? Right. So why would I give somebody with congestive heart failure? What does that look like? What is the pathophysiology of somebody who has heart failure? You really have to do it in a trend. You have to follow. Like this is what your critical thinking and clinical judgment that's what the NCLEX wants. It's a water pill. Too much fluid, right? So, okay. So diuretics do what? They do exactly what they do. Exact, get rid of it, right? What's up, Sandy? I see you out there. All right. So that's how you guys have to approach these questions every single time, okay? Apply what you know, okay? All right, here we go. Everybody's screaming A at me. I saw some C's and stuff in there. But here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is, of course, like you guys said, is A, weight gain is an early symptom of congestive heart failure due to the accumulation of fluid. Important among these are renal retention of fluid. Uh, what is it? Renin, angiotensin, uh, uh, mediated vasoconstriction and uh, sympathetic overactivity. Excessive fluid retention increases the cardiac output by increasing the end uh, diastolic volume, so the preload, but also results in symptoms of pulmonary and systemic congestion, right? So essentially, hey, we're holding on to the fluid. Diuretics need to push fluid out of the body, right? So depending on the diuretic that I give, right, we have what type of different diuretics. Also, pharmacology is the second largest section on the NCLEX. As a matter of fact, from the new, from the old gen to the new gen, it actually went up in percentage. So they're really harping on the pharmacology a little bit more on the NCLEX, okay? So be aware of that. AD in here, shout out to you. K sparing, right? K sparing and K wasting, right? So depending on which one you give will depend on what you have to do next. Like what if they start having, you know, weird dysrhythmias, right? What am I going to be thinking about at that point? Okay. All right, here we go. Question 12, a patient uh, taking uh, Dilantin for a seizure disorder is experiencing breakthrough seizures. A blood sample is taken to determine the serum drug level. Which of the following would indicate a sub-therapeutic level? Is it 15 micrograms per ml? Is it 4 micrograms per ml, 10 micrograms per ml, or 5 micrograms? I'm sorry, 10 micrograms per deciliter or 5 micrograms per deciliter. I'm in middle school. I can answer these. It's so easy. Well, shout out to you, middle schooler. I don't, I mean, cool. Shout out to you. <laughs> All right, everybody screaming D at me. This guy's cool. Shout out to you, uh, Elk Curtain. Appreciate it. I appreciate you loving the content. Hey, so if, for those that are new, Sandy, it's okay if you don't know. If you don't, I, but I would rather you make an educated guess versus if you don't know, right? So remember, there are certain drugs that have therapy that have what like what narrow therapeutic windows, right? So this at this point, you're just like, all right, well, let me figure out based off of I know what this drug does, but what is what are the therapeutic doses that I need to give this patient? Right. Or what are the what are, what are the breakthroughs? Right. So this may this may need a little bit more education on your part. And that's OK. That's why this is this is training here. All right. Here we go. Here's our answer. Uh, I take my exit Friday. Thank you for the review. You're welcome, Ashley. Ashley. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer. And three, two. By the way, I do a whole bunch of ad libs for no reason. <laughs> No reason. It's like the Migos is just living in my head for some reason. But here we go. The, an the correct answer is B, four micrograms per ml. Right. The therapeutic serum level for Dilantin is 10 to 20 micrograms 
per ml. A level of four micrograms per ml is a sub, sub meaning below, right? Therapeutic and uh, may be caused by a patient's noncompliance or increased metabolism of the drug. Uh, therapeutic drug monitoring of dilantin is necessary to ensure dose delivery is at therapeutic levels. Oopsies. Oh, come on, Ellen. You can give stuff away for free, but you oopsies. Come on now. Come on. No, I'm just playing. Shout out to y'all. Uh, I always pick the lowest value uh, when they ask about sub sub therapeutic. OK, that's a really good way to think about it. Uh, I knew it was 10 to 20, but you forgot that it was MLs and not deciliters. Shout out. OK, that makes sense. That makes sense. Hey, remember, you're not going to get them all right. Right. You know, you just need to get enough right to where you to where you get a license. And that's the truth. Uh, what's up, Larry? All right, here we go, y'all. Question 13. A patient arrives to the emergency department complaining of back pain. He reports uh, taking at least three a set of metaphen tablets every three hours for the past week without relief. Which of the following symptoms suggests a set of metaphen toxicity? Is it uh, tet? Uh, Oh my God, tinnitus, I would say tetanus, but tinnitus, diarrhea, hypertension, or hepatic damage. All right, we got some people screaming D. Hey, if you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX questions. We got them off of nurselabs.com. So make sure you guys go over there and check those out for yourself. Also, make sure y'all smash that like button. You guys share and you guys follow. All right, don't be, don't be greedy. Don't be greedy your whole life, yo. Uh, Kenna says B or uh, uh, A and D. Ma'am, you can only pick one. You can, you can only give me one, Kenna. You already know better. I don't know why you're trying to pick so many answers. All right, got A, uh, D is not a symptom, you know, that's what it is. <laughs> it's D, all right, cool. Hey, 10 seconds, y'all. Sarah, and is it, uh, is it Sartage? Sartage, thank you for the follow. Uh, it affects the liver, okay. All right, appreciate the follows, thank you. I can't, I can't afford food or rent. Bidenomics, wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all, here we go. Here's our answer in three, two, and the answer is D, hepatic damage. Acetaminophen is, I'm sorry, acetaminophen in even moderately large doses can cause severe liver damage that may result in death. Immediate evaluation of liver function is indicated with consideration of, uh, what is it, acetal, uh, or N-acetylcysteine administration as an antibiotic. Uh, what else? Acetaminophen is rapidly absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract and reaches therapeutic levels in 30 minutes to two hours. Overdose levels peak at four hours unless other factors can or could delay uh, gastric emptying. All right. Hey, so anytime, anytime you take any type of medications, always think about the way that they're filtered and how high those levels can go. Right. Hey, aspirin. Like what did, what did Cat Williams say? Aspirin is perfectly legal, legal. But if you take 13 of those motherfuckers, it'll be your last headache. Uh, so be careful. <laughs> be careful with that. All right. Physiological adaptation. Third largest section. Yep. Know this as an RT. Shout out to all my hey, everybody that's in my ancillary services. RT, OT, uh, X-ray, uh, my LPNs, my LVNs, my CNAs, my my P, my PCTs. I love it. I love all y'all. I'm telling y'all right now because we couldn't do shit unless y'all were there. I promise you. So shout out to all y'all, especially PT. I, I really be annoying them. And when I worked in the ICU, I know that I, I, I annoyed the shit out of them. I'm like, hey, bro, put that shit back. <laughs> but shout out to y'all because y'all hey, y'all make the patients go from one stage to the next. Right. So shout out to all y'all. Here we go. The nurse is caring for a uh, a cancer patient receiving subcutaneous morphine sulfate for pain. Which of the following nursing actions is most important? Keyword, most important uh, in the care of this patient, is it monitor urine output, respiratory rate, heart rate, or temperature? Everybody's screaming B at me. I anonymously submitted complaints against what? Against other coworkers and ancillary staff. Oh, well, I hope they were shitty people in order for you to do that, though. I better know this one. Sandy, you better know it. All right, y'all. Everybody's screaming the answer at me. All right, so it's B. B suppresses respiratory rate. Okay, okay. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Nurse in pink. All right, nurse in pink. I see you, girl. You gotta say B. Is it Aaliyah? Is it Aaliyah? It's A L E A H A. Is it Aaliyah? Did I say it right? Please tell me I said it right. Larissa? All right, y'all. Here we go. Everybody's screaming B at me. Okay, let's see what the answer is. And three, two, and the answer is B. We want to monitor that respiratory rate. Yes, I said it right. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. I'm sorry, I got excited. I get real happy when I get people's names right. Morphine sulfate can suppress resp uh, respiration and respiratory reflexes such as cough. Patients should be monitored regularly 
for these effects to avoid respiratory compromise. Respiratory depression is among uh, is among the more serious adverse reactions with opiates with opiate use that is especially important to monitor in the post-operative uh, patient population. So shout out to all y'all that got it right. Oops, I have a toddler listening. I have a toddler listening with men. What? You have a toddler listening with men? What? I don't even know. What, what are you talking about? I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm lost. Salty Stacy said these are too easy. Yeah, you. they're too easy for you. These are, And this is like the 15th question. There were some in here that people got wrong. So, you know, here we go. Question, question 15. Uh, the patient arrives at the emergency department with severe lower leg pain uh, after a fall uh, in a touchdown or in a touch football game. Guess it wasn't touch. Guess it was tackle. Following routine triage, which of the following is the appropriate next step in assessment and treatment? Do I want to apply heat to the painful area, uh, apply an elastic bandage to the leg, x-ray, or provide pain meds? Got D's and got some C's. Melissa says C. Wait, what did you say? Deb? It says, I toddler listening with me. You curse. LOL. I'm like, dang, I'm just trying to learn. My bad, Debs. My bad, Deb. Can I call you Debs? My bad, Debs. I'll chill. I'll chill out. You got a toddler listening to you. Look, I got a toddler too, and he's the, the spawn of Satan. All right? So I got you. I'm going to chill. I'll chill out on the curse words. Okay, I'll chill out. Emma says x-ray. Okay. Sound like x-ray saying x-ray. What is a BSN? Somebody let them know what a BSN is. Somebody let her know. Text them with one hand. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. All right, here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. Here is our answer in three, two, not the spawn of Satan. Look, let me tell you, this boy. <laughs> Yo, we're going to talk about him. All right, here we go. And the answer is C, x-ray. Following triage, an x-ray should be performed to rule out fracture. Follow Review follow-up and, ser uh, and serial x-rays. Provide visual evidence of proper alignment or um, beginning uh, callus formation and healing uh, process to determine the level of activity and need for changes in or additional therapy. Hey, somebody said that this question was easy and there were two questions and some people got them wrong. So, hey, you know what it is. While this class is not for me. It's all right, Larry. What you mean? What you mean, Larry? What you mean? Tell, talk to me. Talk to me. Hey, physio physiological ad uh, adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX. OK, all right. Real quick. Don't y'all leave. All right. Hey, who told me next? Hey, user A0, I didn't realize we're on your time, so you don't tell me next. I tell you next. And speaking of that, hey, you come in here, you act crazy, I'm going to ban you, all right? But that's all I love, baby. Hey, participate, all right? Make sure you give me all them likes. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow, all right? Give them all to me. Don't be greedy your whole life. Like I said, you come in my chat and you act fool, I'm going to ban that ass. Literally, that's what it says, all right? I got these questions off nurselabs.com. So you guys go check over those free ones if you want to. Uh, Debs, I'm sorry. I, I cursed again. My bad. Sorry. My bad. No, no, you're good. You're good. You could be excited about learning. Just don't tell me next. All right. I, hey, I got to give ample time for people. And I don't know how long you've been in here. So, hey, seven day NCLEX course, 48 bucks. Make sure you guys check that out. And if you need coaching with NCLEX one on one, make sure you guys go over there. Check that out. Book that phone call. All right. Here we go. Question number 16. Normally you stabilize it. Can't get meds without doctor's order though. Yep, just got here. Okay, see, now you just got here. Can't be rushing me now. Come on now. We got plenty of questions to go. All right, here we go. Question 16. A nurse caring for several patients in the cardiac unit is told that one is scheduled for implantation of an auto, uh, an automatic internal cardioverted defibrillator. Which of the following patients is most likely to have this procedure? A patient admitted for myocardial infarction without um, cardiac muscle damage, a post-operative coronary bypass patient recovering on schedule. Uh, is it C, a patient with a history of ventricular tachycardia and uh, uh, syncopal ep episodes? Or is it D, a patient with a history of atrial tachycardia and fatigue? What are we thinking? A, C. What you mean? What you mean A, C? It's either A or C, ma'am. Shout out to all 360 of y'all rocking. Hey, make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share and make sure you guys follow. We are doing NCLEX questions. Got these questions off nurselabs.com. So you guys can go over there and check that out for yourself. I'm going to say C. Okay. You said C. I'm going to give y'all 15 seconds. All right. And I want to know who y'all are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Are you a pre-nursing student? Are you an, are you a in school right now? Right. Are you about to graduate? Right. Have you been a nurse for a while? Right. LPN student. Shout out to y'all. That's what I'm talking about. 
and let me know what part of the world y'all are from. Hey, I had some I had some folks in here from Australia the other day, from Nepal, like where Mount Everest is at, y'all, in Nepal, right? Had some people from South Africa, had some people from Gambia, all over the place. I ran 25 years, that's what I'm talking about. In school, okay, all right, okay, see, I see y'all out there. I ran for in the USA, retired in Nashville. I always wanted to go to Nashville. Man, I love y'all, man. Y'all out here let me know where y'all from. I appreciate y'all. Here is our answer, y'all. All right, here's our answer in three, two, and the answer is C. And I am so sorry if you guys can't see that. It is just super tiny, all right? An automatic internal uh, cardiover, uh, a cardiover, cardioverter defibrillator uh, delivers an electric shock to the heart to terminate episodes of ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. Uh, this is necessary in a patient with significant ventricular symptoms such as tachycardia resulting in syncope. Indications are usually secondary where the patient has already suffered and survived a cardiac arrest due to ventricular fibrillation or tachycardia or primary when the patient is at high risk of sudden cardiac death due to, uh, 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 was it VF or VT, but has never had uh, any such events, right? So, hey, that's what we give them to. V, A, hey, give them to you because they have VTAC to prevent them from going into VTAC and then ultimately going into VFib, okay? Physiological adaptation, third largest section on the exam. I really appreciate this content. Spice 11, you're welcome. You're welcome. Like, like Ice Spice? Hey, I just want to let y'all know, she's a terrible rapper. She's just attractive. I said it. Y'all can tell her I said it too. No, don't do that. All right, here we go. <laughs> Question 17. Question 17. Hannah says, any advice on the first day of clinicals? Be a sponge, take notes, and jump in. Get, get hands on. Don't be scared because if you're scared, go to church. All right, here we go. Question 17. A patient is scheduled for an MRI scan for a suspected lung cancer. Which of the following is a contraindication to the study for this patient? Is it they have a, a, an allergy to a shellfish? Uh, has a pacemaker, suffers from claustrophobia, or is taking an anti-psychotic uh, medication. So everybody's screaming B, except attitudes from nurses on the floor in clinicals. What do you mean? Expect? Oh, expect. I thought you said accept. Yeah, expect, expect that, right? But never, never, ever, ever, while you're on clinicals or even when you're working as a nurse, will you ever let anybody disrespect you? Now, if you don't know, you don't know, and that's okay normalize stating that you don't know something so you can get clarity or that you can get help. If anybody ostracizes you for that, oh man, Debbie, I don't know if you were still in here. I was about to say the F word because I was getting all into my feelings, but I'm just letting y'all know right now. <laughs> I'm just letting y'all know right now. Don't let people play with y'all. Don't let play. Don't let people play with y'all. I'm not playing. I'm telling you right now. I'm like that overly aggressive father where I don't let people play with me. All right. Or don't play with me or my license and don't be rude. All right. Everybody's like, it's, it's easy. It's, it's so easy to be nice and kind to people. All right. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. That's what I'm talking about. Here we go. The answer is B, the patient with a pacemaker. An implanted pacemaker will interfere with uh, the MRI scanner and uh, may be deactivated by them. The strong uh, static, what is it, magnetic field of MRI scanners <clears throat> can attract and accelerate, uh, what is it, the ferromagnetic objects uh, towards the center of the machine and turn them into a dangerous projectile. Uh, I have a little story about that. This magnetic field uh, can also displace, uh, what is it, uh, uh, oh my God, implants or affect the function of the device such as a pacemaker or pump. So here's a funny story. By the way, this is reduction of risk potential, right? Right, Because we obviously don't want to cause any risks while we're taking this patient to take uh, to get an MRI. But long story short, one time I had a, a pair of trauma shears in my pocket when I took a patient to MRI and the MRI machine yanked that mom yanked it out of my pocket and I thought I died. I thought I died. I thought the patient died. And then the MRI tech got mad at me and I told him I would buy him Chick-fil-A and then we were cool after that. But now I know to check my pants every time I go anywhere. All right. So I just, Hey, Jenny, I just told you the story. Yank that much. Yeah, look, <laughs> you already know what was about to happen. Um, question 18, the nurse calls a physician with the concern that a patient has developed pulmonary embolism. Paint the picture, y'all paint it for it, paint it. Uh, which of the following symptoms ha uh, has the nurse most likely observed? You have a patient is somnolent and or with a decreased response to the family, uh, suddenly complains of chest pain and shortness of breath, has developed a wet cough, and the nurse hears crackles on auscultation of the lungs, or the patient has fever, chills, and loss of appetite. B, got some people saying B, okay, okay, okay. 
Now let's think about this, right? Some people are giving me some question marks, right? But think about this. The, it is most, remember most, what is the most likely observed from somebody that has a pulmonary embolism? Okay. If I could, if I could, if I could assess or see one thing and then leave, or if this is the one thing that would really just make a light bulb go off, what would it be? Hard to breathe and chest pain. So blockage. Okay. Sob. Oh, oh, shortness of breath. I got you. I was like, what is sob? <laughs> My bad. I love all y'all. Shout out to all 571 of y'all in here. If you guys are here, we are doing NCLEX questions. Make sure you smash that like button because you're not greedy. Make sure you follow because you're also not greedy. Um, and then make sure you share because you're also not greedy. All right, here we go. Here we go. Y'all here's our answer. Our answer coming in three call RT, sir. RT's on like the fifth floor. You, you already know they ain't going to be there. Stop playing. <laughs> here we go in three, two, there you go. And what he says, uh, it, they often have a, a, a sense of impending doom. Very, very correct. Uh, and the answer is yeah, yes, it is chest pain and shortness of breath. Let me tell y'all during COVID when I worked on the floor, I can, I've had so many patients, you know, throw PEs as we, uh, as we say, and let me tell you, once you see it, you'll never forget it. Uh, typical symptoms of pulmonary embolism include chest pain, shortness of breath and severe anxiety. And when I tell you severe anxiety, they look at you like, please help me. Uh, the physician should be notified immediately. PEs occur when there is a disruption in the flow of blood in the pulmonary artery or in branches or, or it branches, uh, by a thrombus that originates uh, somewhere else. Chest pain is a frequent symptom and is usually caused by a uh, pleural irritation due to distal emboli causing a uh, pulmonary infarction. In central PEs, chest pain may be uh, from underlying right ventricular ischemia and needs to be differentiated. Hold on. And needs to be uh, differentiated uh, from an acute coronary syndrome or aortic dissection. OK. Hey, I'm just letting you all know physiological adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX. OK. But you got to know what the signs and symptoms are for these ailments that people are having. My brother just had a saddle PE two weeks ago. I'm telling you, when you see it, when you see somebody th have a pulmonary embolism, it is probably one of the like I, my pet. You guys can't see how white this is because it probably looks orange to y'all. But. I've seen people get, get as white as a wall and it's fast. Like it's within seconds and it's probably some of the scariest shit I've ever seen. Uh, not me wanting uh, 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 to my anxiety. Look, I'm just trying to tell you. Uh, question 19. The patient comes to the emergency department with abdominal pain. Workup, workup reveals the presence of a rapidly uh, enlarging abdominal aortic aneurysm. Which of the following actions should the nurse expect? All right. So the one, the biggest pipe in your abdomen is is leaking so what do we do um the patient will be admitted to medicine unit for observation uh okay uh admitted to the day surgery unit for scleral sclerotherapy uh surgical unit and resection will be scheduled or discharge home for follow-up with the cardiologist what are we thinking y'all shout out to all 360 y'all hey i want to know who you are where you're from where you're at in your nursing journey another little another little um tip about me. If you guys don't know, I, uh, I am actually in the Navy. I've been in the Navy for 16 years. I know I just look as, you know, cause black don't crack baby. No, but I'm in the Navy for 16 years. Y'all been a nurse for three and a half. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's been good. Everybody scream and see Houston, not a nurse. What you mean? Houston, not a nurse. I don't even know. Shout out to Florida. I lived in Florida for a little bit. Plan to go to nursing school. I'm in my uh, 10 years of CNA. Thank you for your service. My dad was in the Navy as well. Shout out to you, Taylor. Appreciate that. Thank you for your support. RN since 96 from Detroit. Shout out to Detroit. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Here we go. Let's see what the answer is. Hey, from Florida. I lived in Jacksonville. You know, it's whatever. You know, Duval. Hey, anybody here from Duval? <laughs> Oh, were you uh, were you doing nursing duties while serving? No, I was a surgical tech while I was in the while I was active duty. I was a surgical tech and I was an instructor. All right, here we go. <laughs> St. Augustine. Hey, I love St. Augustine. It's nice down there. Here we go. And our answer is C, a rapidly enlarging abdominal aortic aneurysm is a significant or is at significant risk of rupture and should be resected as soon as possible. Triple A's are a life-threatening condition which require monitoring or treatment depending upon the size of the aneurysm. All right, triple A's may be detected, uh, yeah, was it uh, incidentally or at the time of rupture. And uh, arterial aneurysm is defined as a permanent localized uh, dilation of the vessels 
at least 150% compared to a relative normal adjunct diameter of that artery. Okay, man, why everybody coming here trying to send me nudes, bro? Like, I don't want your nudes. Hey, low key, I do. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> hey, but for real, get out of here with all that nonsense. All right, we, hey, this is this is a family show with some curse words in it. All right, hey, so reduction of risk potential, y'all. All right, Houston, I'm not a nurse, but I am. Uh, have a, uh, hey, shout out to you for getting all the questions right. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, everybody understand that, right? Hey, we're all, hey, hey, they need to go, they need to go to a surgical unit and they need to have a resection scheduled, right? Because they could bleed out fast, right? Depending on how big that, uh, how big that aneurysm is. All right. All right. Here we go. Who said that? Sudden mid scapula plane. Yep. Pain, not plain. I'm sorry. <laughs> here we go. Question 20. A patient with uh, leukemia is receiving chemotherapy that is known to depress bone marrow. A CBC reveals a platelet count of 25,000. Which of the following actions related specifically to the platelet count should be included on the nursing care plan? Is it monitor fever every four hours? Require visitors to wear respiratory, uh, respiratory mask and protective clothing? Um, a consider transfusion of packed red blood cells or check for signs of bleeding, uh, including uh, examination of urine and stool for blood. What are we thinking? Shout out to all 400 of y'all that are in here rocking. Make sure you guys like, smash the like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Hey, don't be coming up in here and being greedy. You know what I'm saying? I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're where you're at in your nursing journey. Not, not Nurse Susie Q up in here. All right. Appreciate y'all. Thank you for the follows. Appreciate the follows. Appreciate the follows. All right, I'm gonna give y'all 15 more seconds. There's a major risk for infection. Is there? Is there? Well, hey, so somebody say, hey, let me know. What is the key? What, what What's the key thing that's sticking out? What's the key thing that's sticking out? Key things that are sticking out. Anesthesia student here. Anesthesiology student here. Any tips for the headaches that come with school? Melissa. Baby, that would take us all stream, and I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> oh, uh, good time management, Melissa. Time management. That's all I can really tell you right now at this point. All right, here we go. Here's our answer in three, two, and the answer is D. Risk. Uh, what is it for bleeding? Uh, and you want to examine the urine and the stool for blood, right? CBC, not WBC. Yes, literally time management, like. I have to put myself, I had to put myself on an Excel spreadsheet of that. That's how time management was when I was in school. All right. So a platelet count of 25,000 is severe thrombocytopenic and should prompt the initiation of bleeding precautions, including monitoring urine and stool for evidence of bleeding. Laboratory values or laboratory results for coagulation status is appropriate. The platelet count. What is it? The prothrombin time, the INR. uh, What is it? The uh, uh, partial thromboplastin time fibrinogen, bleeding time, vitamin K, all that stuff, right? There you go. My body stopped making uh, red blood cells when I was six and I almost died. I thought you were joking, Cricket. I'm sorry. I was like, are you serious right now? How are you alive talking to me if your body stopped just making red blood cells? Uh, how often do you do practice exams? These are so helpful. Candace, I do them Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 530. I'm thinking about doing them every day, but we'll see. FFP, you already know. Kathleen. All right, so reduction in risk potential. All right, here we go. 72 on my oncology exam and I'm still happy, but still uh, happy about it. Hey, a pass is a pass. That's all that means. Hey, real quick, participate. We're doing NCLEX questions. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Stop being greedy. Or, man, I wish I had some goons in my chat. I'm going to start sending them after y'all. You know what I'm saying? But I love y'all. I appreciate all y'all that are here. Don't troll my chat. You troll my chat, I'm going to ban that ass. You can see it. It says it right there. I got these questions off nurselabs.com. So go over there and check those out for yourself. If you guys need an NCLEX review, I, I have created one. We have 42 content videos in there right now, and the reviews are on the way. For $48, you can get it for a lifetime. So make sure you guys go over there and check that out. That link is in my bio. And also check out uh, the link in my bio for coaching if you need that. All right. One on one coaching. Let's see if you need it, first of all. You know what I'm saying? So here we go. Question 21. Uh, can you do it for the LVNs? Yeah. What are you talking about? Do what for the LVNs? Talking about coach them? I've coached many of LVNs. Uh, nurses help, but your instructor should also. I don't even know. Scorpio, what are you talking about? Where did you even come from? You've been in the chat the whole time? Oh my God. Here we go. Question 21. Patient is undergoing the induction stage of treatment of leukopenia. The nurse uh, teaches family members about infectious precautions, which are the following statements by the family member indicate that the family needs more education. So what, what 
apparently they're not getting it. So what what did they say that, hey, we're not getting? Uh, we can bring books and magazines for entertainment. They can bring personal care items for comfort, fresh flowers, or, you know, family pictures. Which one? What are we thinking? Maria says, definitely C. All right, Maria. I, I like where Maria's head's at. Definitely telling me C. Fresh fruits. Okay. Okay. For show C. Okay. All right. All right. All right. GG says C. Okay. I was about to say, I literally was about to say, man, I got to get, I got to get checked up. My my ADHD is kicking in. <laughs> I don't even think I have that. I'm just self-diagnosing. Google MD out here. Neutropenic precautions. Uh, we got somebody that says D. Okay. A bunch of people saying C. Is it Elena? Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follow. Man, y'all are going fast. All right, here we go. Here we go, y'all. Here's our answer in three, two, and the answer is C. We don't want to bring those fresh flowers like and some other fresh things, right? It says during induction uh, chemotherapy, the leukopenia patient is severely immunocompromised and at risk for severe infection. So fresh flowers, fruit, plants can carry microbes and should be avoided. Teach proper hand washing using antibacterial soaps before and after each care activity. Uh, hand washing and hand hygiene lessens the risk of uh, cross contamination. Okay, so yes, you're guessing, Ruby. Why are you guess? Why are you guessing? It's okay if you guess. I'd rather you guess and then find out what the answer is. Either it be right or not right, right? And also read your rationales. If you guys don't know, read them so you know why it's correct. And then read your answer, your answer choices and see why these are not correct, all right? That's how you study. Charlie says, hey, I'm here. Oh, I, oh my bad, Charlie. Didn't, <laughs> didn't know you left, girl. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you being here. Rationales be saving me. The rationales save everybody, Madison. That's just what it does. Here we go. Question 22. The nurse is caring for a patient with acute uh, lymphoblastic leukemia. Which of the following is the most likely age range of the patient? Most likely. Keyword, most. All right. Everybody's screaming A. Everybody's screaming A. I mean, if you guys are new here, make sure you guys like, share, follow. All right. That's what the, hey, that's what the trifecta of uh that's what the trifecta of tiktok wants baby make it happen also i want to know who you are where you are from and where you're at in your nursing journey let me know don't be greedy 10 seconds y'all kimberly thank you for the follow daniela <laughs> why say your name like that daniela thank you for the follow <laughs> alisa thank you for the follow socal like san diego i used to live there too michigan shout out to michigan West Virginia, second semester in Brook in Brooklyn, taking NCLEX next week. Shout out to Brooklyn. Marcy Projects. I don't know. I don't know nothing about Marcy Projects. I heard I heard it on Dave Chappelle. Shout out to Texas. Sophie, where you at in Texas? I live in San Antonio. Tiffany from New Jersey. Shout out to you. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. South Carolina. Okay, okay. You live in San Antonio, Sophie. Okay, girl. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is A, three to 10 years old. A, the peak incidence of ALL is at four years of age. It is uncommon after the mid-teen years. It is uh, diagnosed in about 4,000 people in the United States each year, with the majority being under the age of 18. It is most common, I'm sorry, it is the most common uh, malignancy of childhood, the peak age of diagnosis is between two and 10 years of age. CLL is old people. Shout out to old people. Yes, and you are correct. Big shout out to the med students. Woo woo. I got some, who, who else got, what, I got some other med students up in here. Hey, let me know if you're not a nursing student or anything nursing, let me know who you are, right? Let me know. Physical therapy techs, occupational therapy techs, you know what I'm saying? My patient care techs, I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? I love you. A vet, a vet student. Okay, shout out to you. All right, y'all, here we go. Question number 23. A patient is admitted to the oncology unit uh, for diagnosis of suspected Hodgkin's disease. Which of the following symptoms is a typical Hodgkin's disease? Is it painful cervical lymph nodes? Is it night sweats and fatigue, nausea and vomiting, or weight gain? Haitian nurse. Okay, shout out to you, ma'am. Shout out to you being over there in Haiti. If, or if you are in Haiti, are you a Haitian nurse working in Haiti? Social worker. I got some friends that are some LCSWs out there. Okay, we got B's occupational therapist. Shout out to you. I got one of my buddies who's an occupational therapist as well. Got any x-ray up in here? Respiratory, I love y'all. I learned everything I needed to know from the respiratory techs. Everything I needed to know when it came to the vent. Perfect hats, baby. Perfect hats. 
All right, y'all. I'm going to give y'all 10 more seconds. RN student, two weeks left. Hey, you're almost there, right around the corner. Infection prevention list. Yes, I, I love infection prevention. I actually helped out a little bit with them, and uh, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed just walking around socializing, honestly. Search tech is search tech and nursing. Shout out to you. I was a search tech in the Navy for like 13 years. I was a search tech instructor for three and a half. And uh, that was probably one of the best uh, things I ever did while I was in the Navy was being an instructor. Respiratory therapist, not tech. Oh, my bad. Sorry, Carrie. Carrie, the therapist. Okay, I'm sorry, girl. Uh, all right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer before I get yelled at in three, two. <laughs> and the answer is B, night sweats and fatigue. Symptoms of Hodgkin's disease includes night sweats, fatigue, weakness, and tachycardia. Hodgkin's lymphoma it's formerly called Hodgkin's disease is a rare uh, monoclonal lymph node neoplasm with high uh, with high cure rates. Biological and clinical studies have divided these diseases, these disease entities into two distinct categories, classical Hodgkin's lymphoma and nodular uh, lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma. So try saying those like a million times fast. You know what I'm saying? So. Like it's wild out here. Uh, house gives me a, house gives me all the answers. What you mean? Oh, the house supervisor gives you all the answers. Oh, I see what you're saying. I got you. Uh, physiological adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX. Okay, remember that. Hey, we're sitting right at an hour, y'all. Right at an hour. Here we go. Question twenty four. The Hodgkin's disease patient described in the question previously, not above. Uh, undergoes a lymph node uh, biopsy for definitive diagnosis. If the diagnosis of the Hodgkin's disease were correct, which of the following cells would the pathologist expect to find? Uh, is it Reed Sternberg? Uh, was it the lymph, the, the, the lymph, the lymphoblastic cells? Is it the gotcher or the reader or the writer? Reader, writer. I had somebody come in here and tell like, you said it wrong. I'm just like, look, do I look like a 10 year old getting ready for a spelling bee? I think not. <laughs> and just FYI, when y'all start, <laughs> start saying some of these words in here. Like, especially when you start working as a nurse, people are going to be like, why would you put that in there? <laughs> Carly says trip double A. OK. All right. So I'm going to give you all 10 more seconds. No followed. Appreciate the follow. No. All right. Everybody's screaming A at me. All right, y'all. Let's check this answer. Tammy, thank you for the follow. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is A, a definitive diagnosis of Hodgkin's disease is made if Reed Sternberg cells are found on pathologic examination of the uh, of the excised lymph node. There it is. Cancer is the hardest for me, worse than maternity and psych. So for me, when I was in school, it was definitely farm and it was definitely maternity. Um, I don't know why the cancer stuff just seemed like it was OK, but I'm telling you, the cancer meds are the are the monsters. Uh, who is it? Cricket, Queen, and XO. Thank you for the follow. DJ, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Here we go. Question 25. The nurse is about to undergo bone marrow aspiration and biopsy and expresses fear and anxiety for the procedure or about the procedure. Which of the following is the most effective nursing response? Uh, warn the patient to stay very still because the smallest movement will increase her pain. Encourage the family to stay in the room for the procedure. Stay with the patient and focus on slow, deep breathing for relaxation or delay the procedure to allow the patient to deal with her feelings. Hey, we care about your feelings out here. Shout out to all 300 of y'all that are in here. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you follow and make sure you share because, you know, you're not greedy out here. And also, hey, we got these questions off nurselabs.com. They're free questions, you know, free, F-R-E-E. -E. You know, so go over there and check them out. They may not be the best questions. However, they are questions nonetheless, and they are free. So don't complain if they're fucking free. <laughs> what number am I stopping at today? Pfft, I don't even know. Maybe 30, maybe 40, maybe 75, maybe 85. Maybe we'll just go the distance today on this Monday. All right. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. First semester, Michaela. Okay, girl, I see you out there. All right, here we go. Maybe a 100. Mm, 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 mm. Here we go. <laughs> San Antonio nursing student third semester at UIW. I know you paid a penny, a pretty penny staff to go to UIW. Here we go. And the answer is C. Slow, deep breathing is the most effective method to, uh, I'm sorry, of reducing anxiety and stress. Uh, it reduces the level of carbon dioxide in the brain to increase calm and relaxation. Stay with the patient during panic attacks. Use short, simple directions. Encourage the client's participation in relaxation exercises, uh, such as deep breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, guided imagery, uh, meditation, and so forth. 
All right, so it's definitely with C. And I'm not even going to lie to you. One of those meditation things that I do when I worked in PACU, because I had patients that would freak out, I would do guided imagery. And for some reason, they they just like me whispering in their ear. They're weird. You know, people are weird when they wake up off drugs. They really are. <laughs> hey, real quick, participate. We're doing NCLEX questions. Give me all them likes. Give me all them shares. Give me all them follows. Don't troll my chat. Y'all have been doing y'all been doing excellent tonight. I appreciate y'all. NurseLabs.com. That's what I told you guys before. Also, seven day NCLEX course, pre-launch phase, lifetime access. You get it for $48. Go get it before it changes. Um, also, if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching with the NCLEX and with the NCLEX, you guys can go over there and you guys can book a call with me for 15 minutes and we can see if you even need it. All right, here we go. Question 26. I would not like to be whispered. I would not like Steph. I'm not going to whisper. I mean, to them, it sounds like I was whispering. I don't know, but I'm really good at the guided imagery. I really am. Uh, here we go. Question 26. A mother complains to the clinic nurse that her two and a half year old son is not yet toilet trained. She is particularly concerned that although he uh, was it re reliably uses the uh, potty, the potty seat for bowel movements, he isn't able to hold his urine for long periods, which of the following statements by the nurse is correct. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? I'm gonna let y'all read it. I just want to make sure everybody can see that. Veronica, thank you for the follow. If you guys are just joining, we are doing NCLEX questions, nursing style questions. Make sure you guys like, share, and follow. Hey, I do these every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5.30. I've been thinking about doing some group coaching. What do y'all think about that? Should I do some group coaching? If I do group coaching, I'm only going to do 10 at a time. And by that, I mean like 10 a month. <laughs> Everybody's screaming C at me. Okay. Okay. 10 seconds. Taylor says C. Right, we got some B's. Got XO says A. Ferb. <laughs> Ferb says B. Okay. Royal Oasis says C. Okay. User 23 says C. All right, y'all. Here we go. You guys are kind of all over the place, but let's find out what this answer is. All right. Mildred. Your name is Mildred? Hey, I'm, I'm not saying anything about your name. I just haven't seen a name like Mildred in quite some time. All right, here we go. Here we go, y'all. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is C. Uh, what is it? Bowel control is usually achieved before bladder control in the average in the average age is what? 24 to 36 months. All right. So toddlers typically learn bowel control before bladder control with boys. They take longer to complete toilet training than girls. Readiness to begin toilet training depends on the individual child. In general, starting before the age of two is not recommended. The readiness skills uh, and physical development the child needs occurs between 18 months and two and a half years. All right, two to three, especially for those that uh, who have kids. And, you know, especially if you have boys, y'all already know. You already know. Mildred, uh, Mildred, we like your name. I, I'm not saying we don't like your name. I'm just saying I haven't heard I haven't heard the name Mildred in, in quite some time. So it's a it's a great name, Mildred. OK, that's a great name. All right, here we go. Next question. All right, question 27. The mother of a 14-month-old child <clears throat> uh, reports to the nurse that her child will not fall asleep at night without a bottle in the crib and often wakes during the night asking for another. Which of the following instructions by the nurse is correct? Allow the child to have the bottle at bedtime, but withhold the one uh, later in the night. Put juice in the bottle instead of milk. Uh, give one bottle of water at bedtime. Do not allow bottles in the crib. What are we thinking? Shout out to all 314 of y'all. We are doing NCLEX questions. I appreciate y'all being here. We do these every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 530. All right, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Make sure you smash the like button and make sure you share and make sure you follow. I'm just a nursing baby. I'm only three weeks. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. Every uh, every class is still, is still so exciting. Right, right, right. Michigan. I have some friends from Michigan. Well, mostly just one friend. <laughs> Is it Kiara? Kiara? Is that how you say your name? Is that how I say it? RN from the Bahamas. Look, I'm trying to go on vacation. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Cincinnati State taking farm right now for RN. Shout out to you, Mildred. All right. All right. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is C. Give only a bottle of water at bedtime. Babies and toddlers should not fall asleep with bottles containing liquid other than plain water due to the risk of dental decay. Wean one ounce a night. Uh, let's say the child takes 
all right, I'm not reading all that. So obviously don't give them, don't give them a bottle, but you, but you let, yes, this is what y'all want to do. You guys want to read the rationales all the way through. Okay. I'm preparing for NCLEX pink Ranger. You said you're winning. You win. Wait, what, what happened? What I miss? All right, y'all. Hey, so health promotions and maintenance. Remember when you guys are studying, the biggest thing that you need to do is read your rationales. That is how you are able to retain. All right. That's how you are able to retain. All right. All right. Hey, and also some people are just like, hey, can you go back? No, I will not go back because on NCLEX, once you pick your question, that's it. It's locked. It's sealed. Can't go back. All right. Here we go. Question 28. Which of the following actions is not appropriate in the care of a two month old infant? Uh, place the infant on her back for uh, naps and bedtime. Allow the infant to cry for five minutes before responding. If she wakes during the night as she may fall back asleep, talk to the infant frequently and make eye contact to encourage the language development or wait until at least four months to add infant cereal and uh, strain fruits to the diet. XL, what's in? I don't know what that is. I don't know what answer choice. I'm assuming you meant B. I'm assuming that's what you meant because you're probably typing too fast. Holly says A, none, none of your business, <laughs> ma'am, respectfully. You got excited? That's all good. I see, <laughs> I see you out there. Shout out to all 425 of y'all. I appreciate everybody letting me know where they're from. It gives me a good gauge of, you know, the audience that I'm reaching. I Look, I'm still, it's still crazy to me that I reach some folks in Nepal. Yes, where Mount Everest is at. It's crazy to me. Uh, some people in Gambia, right? So I got some folks in, uh, who, who somebody said the Bahamas right now. I had somebody in Australia. Was it Perth in Australia? All right. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. Here is our answer. Our answer is coming in three, two. All right, y'all. The answer is B. Allow the infant to cry for five minutes before responding if she wakes during the night as she may fall back asleep. Mm, let's see. Infants under six months may not be able to sleep for long periods of time because their stomachs are too small to hold adequate nourishment to take uh, to take them through the night. After six months, it may be helpful to let babies put themselves back to sleep after waking during the night, but not prior to six months. By six months of age, most babies are uh, physiologically capable of sleeping through the night and are and no longer require uh, nighttime feeding. Yo, there there be the answer. There be the answer. There'd be the answer. I didn't read the age and the problem. I'm horrible at reading. Hey, so I'm gonna tell all 400 plus of y'all right now. And if you have kids, make sure you guys cover their ears. All right, it's coming in three, two. You need the biggest thing. One of the biggest things you need to do is RTFQ, right? RTFQ, you need to read the fucking question. Read it. I don't care how many times you had to read it. Read it, read it, read it, read it, read it until you understand it. Because if you don't read it all the way, you will get it wrong. All right. I got it right, but I changed my answer. That's another rule. Once you pick nine times out of 10, your first answer is your correct answer. Mrs. Stevens, ma'am, can we have a conversation? Come on, bring it close. Stop. Stop changing your answer. Stop. Stop. Stop it. All right. That that That's for everybody else. Stop. Stop. Stop changing your fucking answers, all right? Because nine times out of ten, they're they're usually right. All right, here we go. Question twenty nine. All right. <laughs> uh, an older patient asks a nurse to recommend strategies to prevent constipation. Which of the following suggestions would be helpful? Note: more than one answer may be correct. Select all that apply. Lexi, thank you for the follow. L -l 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 Erica, thank you for the follow. All right, y'all. Here we go. What are we thinking? I'm going to give you all 15 more seconds. 15 more seconds. We've got A, B's, and C's. I saw somebody else say something else. All right, A, B, C, E. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. A, B, C, E, water movement fiber. Okay. B, C, E. A, B, C, laxative effort day protein. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I see you. I see you. All right, y'all, here we go. Here we go. Here is our answer. Here's our answer coming in three, two. And the answer is A, B, and C. There it is. A daily bowel movement is not necessary if the patient is capable and the bowels move regularly. Moderate exercise, such as walking, uh, encourage bowel health, as uh, does general uh, generous water intake. A diet high in fiber is also helpful. 
Check on the unusual patterns of elimination, including frequency and consistency of stool. It is very crucial to carefully know what is normal for each patient. The normal frequency of stool passage range uh, from twice daily to once every three to four days. Uh, dry and hard feces are common characteristics of constipation. All right. Don't do D, friends. D causes constipation. Hey, has anybody ever drank like a protein shake or all you ate was like red meat or like steaks or anything like that? If you drink, think about it, drink nothing but freaking like protein shakes if you're going to go work out and then watch how hard it's going to be for you to go, you know, go dookies out there. You know what I'm saying? Watch how hard it's going to be. It will cause constipation. I'm telling you right now. That's why they say when you do a protein, do a green like right behind it. That way, you know, mixes together and it just flushes out your body. Yeah, protein. No, I didn't RTFQ. Look at you, XLC. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. All right, here we go, y'all. Question 30. A child is admitted to the hospital with suspected rheumatic fever. Which of the following observations is not confirming the diagnosis, right? So three of these will confirm the diagnosis and one of them will not. Which one is it? A red and rash visible over the trunk or extremities. A history of sore throat that was self-limited in the past month. Uh, a negative uh, anti streptolysin O titer or an unexplained fever. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Give me that answer. Give me the answers. My bad. All right, here we go. All right, y'all. I'm gonna give y'all 10 seconds. And this stopwatch I got going, y'all, is fast. Like, I mean, look at it. Like, phew, right there. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. T, thank you for the follow. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer in three, two. Oh, pff, I hit it wrong. Just kidding. All right, here we go. Uh, the answer is C, a negative anti streptolysin O titer. Rheumatic fever is caused by an untreated. Group A, B, uh, hemolytic uh, streptococcus infection in the previous two to six weeks confirmed by a positive uh, anti-streptolysin O titer. An ASO is a test used to detect streptococcal antibodies detected against streptococcal lysin O. An elevated titer is proof of a previous streptococcal infection. It is usually more elevated after a pharyngeal than skin infection. Uh, while the ADB is typically elevated regardless of the site of the infection. So shout out to y'all. My son had scarlet fever a couple of years ago. Uh, is that how you got the answer right? Huh, Meg? Huh? Speaking of Meg, I did watch the Meg and Meg 2. Uh, they are right. No, they're not. They're, they're terrible movies. And your name just reminded me of that. So shout out to you, Meg. Also, Family Guy. Pretty sure you got all the jokes. I'm not even going to do that to you. But shout out to you, Meg. <laughs> hey, man, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap on our questions. Uh, first of all, I appreciate everybody being here. I love, and I appreciate every single person that comes to the live. Remember we do them three times a week at five 30 central standard time. So somebody asked how many questions are we doing? I did 30. <laughs> hey, I didn't have to, I banned one person. And that was somebody who's trying to send me nudes. I don't want you sending me nudes in my chat. If you're going to send me nudes. DM me. No, I'm just playing. Don't do that. Um, Hey, and I didn't have to be petty. I like banning people. Right. And I'm not sorry. I'm petty over 1,000. Not even going to lie to you. All right. Hey, I don't gatekeep. Like I said, I got these questions off nurselabs.com. The seven-day NCLEX course, y'all, it is in my, it is, the link is in my bio. It is in a pre-launch phase. It's for $48. I just finished my new generation NCLEX review, right? And it's, I'm editing it right now and it should be up here in the next couple of, uh, next couple of days as well as um, you'll get that for 48 bucks. So make sure you guys check that out. Also, if you want coaching, that link is also in my bio. Usually I do an AMA after this, but I got a coaching call that I'm about to go into right now with one of my students who is trying to pass her LVN right now. All right, so you guys are welcome. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing this again on, uh, what is it, Wednesday at 5.30. Central Standard Time, Texas Time, San Antonio Time. That's the only time that matters. But make sure you guys, regardless, like, right? Like everything. Make sure you guys share because that's super important. But the biggest thing is make sure you guys follow, okay? I'm going to be dropping some TikToks that are going to be helpful for nursing students that's coming up. Um, 
So be on the lookout for that. You know, some little helpful tent, uh, tips, stuff like that. Also, if you have any requests, send me a DM and be like, hey, can you make a TikTok about this? And I'm like, I got you. All right. But I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I hope you guys have a next, uh, you guys have a safe next couple of days and I will see you guys on Wednesday. Bye.